Hey, yo, what's good with it, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Wilson. And you are now tuned in to Wilson Block 100 Radio. And we got your boy, Eric Williams, on the block with us today. What's good with it? What's good with it, my dude? Chilling, sure. chilling. Yeah, right. man. You know, we honored to have you here for this exclusive with thank the Wilson you. Block. Thank you. You know Appreciate what I mean? Appreciate that. And, uh, I just want to thank you for, you know, being flexible. You know what I'm saying? Really, you know... Making it happen. Hey, you know we what all mean? got to get it in when we can, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So that's what we do. No doubt. So uh, for our audience listening, man, can you just give us a quick background on yourself? Well, uh, man, I've been here in Dina since, man, since I was about five. Okay. Uh, I've been in Alpsadena all my life, you know what I mean? Went to John Mayer High School, graduated in 87, yeah, played be football. Known, Stang, you yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. It's Stang, it's Stang or nothing, you know what I mean? So I know the HS and the Blair people, they say they schools, but we all right. know, you know. I don't know, you, you didn't go to Blair, did you? Yeah. Oh, okay, all right, okay, I, you know. But yeah, so I went to went to Mayer, graduated in 87, you know, okay. played, played ball with, with with some couple of famous people. No you doubt. Know, and, uh, you was uh, on the basketball? No, I played football. Football, Yeah, okay. I played football. Football, we won two CIF championships. Oh, thank you know what I mean? You. So we went 14 and 0 one year, 13 and 1 one year. So, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah, so did you, did you actually play in the tussle? Oh, come on, man. We're yeah, right there. You're right. I'm, <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, no, if, you don't you know. the, if you don't play in the tussle, right. you don't play. Right. So, in, right. in my 11th grade year, you know, I, I, I scored in the tussle. I was a corner okay, and, no and picked up a fumble and ran, uh, ran it thank back. You. So, so, yeah, yeah. So I got, so one, you got that I got footage? Money. Uh, you know what, man? I probably got the footage, yeah. but it's it's somewhere tucked away with a bunch right, of stuff. Right, right. Oh yeah, man, you, you catch know, that, so. man? I gotta re- I gotta review that. You okay, know what I mean? okay, for sure, for sure. So, no doubt. You know, and then um, other than that, man, just just been here in Dina, you know, pretty much all my life. Right. Uh, you know, did some music for a while under the name E-Dub. E-Dub, you thank know, you. know, which is what, what really everybody in town know me as is, is E-Dub. Okay. So, you know, they know Eric Williams, but you say E-Dub. They be like, oh, yeah, E-Dub. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, without a right. doubt. So, that's no what doubt. that is. So, so, you got any of that music still floating around or, you know? <laughs> you know, I mean, I still got some from my personal stuff, but... Uh-huh. Really, man, you know the game done changed so much. Right, uh, you know my stuff is is dated. I right, even, no doubt, yeah, no I doubt. Would, I wouldn't even get into it. I wouldn't so even you, get into it. You would say you was really into it back in like nineties, early two thousands. Man, me and my me and my dudes, man, uh, uh, Earl VC and Peyton Ewing, we really came out with with our first thing, man, in like eighty. Five, around eighty four, eighty five. No doubt, is when we came out with our with our first little single, man, you know that was, so, hey, that's yeah. when hip hop was still, you know, <laughs> was new. Absolutely. So you know, they they my boys say that you know we was really the first ones credited with on the West Coast with like a with like a conscious rap song. Oh no doubt, so that's that's what my boys tell me, you okay. know. So that so you know I can I can take a little bit of credit for that, you right. know. And then uh, you know then the rap game changed. I did my thing. They kind of did their thing and. You know, that yeah. Was so that. yeah. So at what point did you kind of realize, like, okay, I'm gonna go do something else? As far as music, or yeah. as far I as, mean, were you pursuing it like as a career? Or I, you, I was. It, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I was. I was. I was. Uh, I was really pursuing music, man. I, um, I, when I started doing my solo thing, I um, hooked up with a manager. Hooked up with my boy up uh, that I was in the Air Force with up in up in Sacramento. I was doing a lot of shows up in the Bay mm-hmm. Area and stuff. Okay. You know, so I was I was kind of getting out there, and right. then. I hooked up with some folks down here, you know, and then from there, man, life started taking over. Yeah. You know, kids, Reality bills, responsibilities, right. that kind of stuff. I always tell young cats, if you're going to do it, do it while you're young and you really don't have them responsibilities. Exactly. Once them bills and stuff start kicking in, then man. it's like, okay, is it the bills and the wife and the kids and the family or is it me pursuing this dream? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. If you ain't taking care of one, then you're slipping on the other. Right, So Real tough. You know. You know, that just reminds me of, uh, you know, when grown-ups used to tell me as a kid, like, you know, just worry about being a kid right now. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, exactly. you know, you know, being a kid and growing up, you know, you, <clears throat> I hate to say it, but, you know, those people were right. You know Without what I mean? Doubt. Yeah. When you're <laughs> so, a kid, you got to enjoy that because once them bills kick in, it's right. grown-up time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's grown-up time. Real talk. You got to adapt. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that's what it is, man. So, okay. And then uh, you you actually got into another profession. Like I know you experiment with truck driving and things right. like that. Um, man, I got turned on to this to this T shirt thing, which is you know really why we're here today. Right, right. But, yeah, you I was know, you know go leave that. Based on my T shirt yeah. thing, um, through my boy, man. Um, y'all may even know him. His name is uh, he used to go by the name. Well, he still do by the name of Rob Love. He okay. was doing this thing called Gorilla Republic. I'm, him I'm, and uh, him and my god brother John Long. Okay. JL is what they call him. So 
They they really was the ones that turned me on to this whole T-shirt game. Okay, we know? are born and raised. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> we, we are born and raised. It, it's what com. it is now. Exactly. You go get whatever you want. I you know design whatever you want, how you want it. Right. You know. Yeah, I do all my own little personal stuff too. You know, designs and ideas. So but you create the designs. Some designs I create. Some designs people come with me, come at me and say, "Hey, I want X, Y, and Z," and right. I say, "Okay," and flip it and kind of you know tweak it a little bit exactly. and make it how they want it. Do you have like any formal you know design schooling or Man, anything I don't like have that? No design school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and really, you know what my creative creativity I think it comes from was was when you're an artist regardless of what kind of artist it was. I used to be a, a rap artist. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have that creative vibe in you. Exactly. So now I think that creative vibe has been transferred over into into what I do with these shirts. Right. Now. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Creativity exactly. is creativity. Whatever form you, you know, you choose to express it in. Exactly. Creativity is creativity. Yes, sir. And then so you found another channel. Avenue to, right, to, to, to channel my creativity. No doubt. Which Absolutely. Is, which is these shirts, <laughs> which I, you know, I get, I get a joy out of. Even if a lot of stuff I don't sell. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just the idea of creating exactly. something and putting it out there, which no is doubt. the same with music. You exactly. may do music, you know what I'm saying? And you like it, but maybe no nobody else like it. But right. you put it out there because it's your creativity. Exactly. And that's really what you're doing it for is for your creativity. To be, to be absolutely, expressed. absolutely. You know, you know I, I mean? yeah, I, I gotta let you know, man. It, it was really, you know, I saw you doing the t-shirt thing, and then you know, I heard the little, you know, the e dub right, right. resurface. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's why I was like, man, this dude's an artist, man. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like, let me reach out. You know what I mean? And, right. and you know, make it happen. So that's that's amazing, man. Especially when you know you were able to you know see that in yourself. You know right. what I mean? And and use it for the betterment of, you know what I mean? Right. Cause some people, you know, we got gifts, especially a lot of gang members, man. They they overlook their talents. Right. And they sell themselves short. You know what so I mean? So caught up in the life. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, you know, I just really want to commend you, you know, for finding that angle. You I know what I mean? Appreciate that. Uh but you know, in, in regards to the T shirts, you know, when I first came across them, you know, I was seeing, you know, uh uh, you know, Inglewood and Compton and Watts, you know what I mean? Right. So I just think that was a good hook. Exactly. You know what I mean? That you created a brand that, you know, can, you know, be based out of anywhere. Exactly. Well, you know, everybody like to represent their city. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what your city is, whether it's big, small, in between, country, rural, uh, inner city, whatever it is, people like to represent where it is they from. Right. And so that was always my thing to to rep, to let people represent where it is they from. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Where would, rep what you wear. Wear what you rep. Right. You know what I mean? No doubt. So that's, that's, that's what I do. So where do you where do you pull inspiration from when you're like trying to come up with a new design or when someone does bring something to you like, you know, it, it, I'm sure a lot of times it's things you ain't done before. Right. Um, you know, man, you I mean, you get inspiration from all over the place. A lot of times I'll go on the net if somebody says, hey, man, I got an idea for this or that or whatever. I say, OK, well, let me see what I can do. You know what I mean? Um, I got a little cousin now who uh, who who's who's suffering from cancer and mm. uh, his cousin. I mean, his mom called me and was like, you know, he really wants a. Uh, uh, it would be nice if we could get him a shirt that said Cancer Warrior. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So right. I went online and found something like that that had a cool, nice little design, changed it up a little bit. Right. And, you know, I'm going to print that up and send it to him. So, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, you, you just you just go out there and kind of find, you know, your creative niche. Yeah, you that's know, and, and that's good that you're actually using it to help make a difference in other people's lives. Right. You know what I mean? That's right. that's what makes it, that's what brings it home. Exactly, you know what I mean? Exactly. When you can do something like that, it, it really feels good sometimes to just... To give, you know exactly. what I'm saying? They they say that, and until you really do it, you know you you don't really know. Right. Exactly. I want to know if I can chime in a little bit. Sure. Is there um, is there any uh, designs that you won't do? You know, like if someone comes to you with something like uh, a gothic or something, is there something you won't do? You refuse to do against your morals or? Religion? If it's Donald Trump, he's not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say that for him. <laughs> you know, you know no, what? Baby. You, you know what though? Um, <laughs> It's a it's a trip, man, and and because I, I own everything I love. I was just thinking about this the other day. I had posted a uh, I'm doing an Obama shirt right now. Yeah, the forty four. Yeah, I actually 44. wanted to bring that up. Good, good, it's beautiful. Good so Leading into that, so I I posted that on because uh, I got my my own private uh, Facebook Facebook uh, site, and then I have a We Are Born and Raised site. Right. So. When I did, uh, Facebook has what's called a promotion thing where you can promote whatever the ads pictures or whatever. Yeah. Right. So when I promoted the, the 44, the Obama 44, man, I got so many negative 
racist comments really? on on this Obama forty four picture. Wow. Yeah, a lot of people. I mean, you know, I don't know if uh, a lot of people know or whatever, but I did. And instead of, I I think maybe a while ago, I just decided I wasn't going to be an internet bully and attack people and do stuff. Right, like trying you know right. feed into it. Right. So with all the attacks that people were making, you know, instead of lashing back at them, I'm you know I'm trying to sell them. Right. You know what exactly. I'm saying. Right. And so with that though. I'm not gonna lie to you, homie. I, I really start thinking like, you know what I should do? I should make up a, a, a website and and sell uh, uh, sell Donald Trump stuff. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, if them folks is gonna, if them folks is gonna buy it, because and this this is real. I mean. Racist people that own companies and whatnot, they're not going to say, okay, well, I'm a racist and I'm not going to sell to you black people. No, they say, you know what? I'm going to get your money. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And so exactly. if white people is racist and they mad and they upset about this, you know what? If I can hide my face or whatever and put a product out there that they want and you're going to give me the money, man, look. <laughs> look, man. You know what we I mean? We're going to rest. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the truth. I don't think I'd do, I'd do anything, you know, uh really degrading people right, or, right, or exactly. you know, sexually explicit towards right. kids or, right, or women right, and stuff absolutely. like that. That right. kind of stuff I wouldn't do. Yeah, but absolutely. if it's if it's you know, within a certain realm right, right. where I can go out and make some money off right. of it, they're gonna pay for it. Man, I right. mean we pay for stuff all day long. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And and, and what are they taking to do with our money? They taking take it right out of our communities and right. put it into their communities and right. live the lives that they want to live. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Yeah, speaking on that, you know, let's touch on, you know, uh, you know, putting money back into the community, you know what I mean, and recycling the black dollar. You know what I mean? Because I know, you know, you you you're passionate about that's that. My, you that's my that's why I, mean? I, I I really am, man. Um and I again I just decided. I went over to Perry's today. I yes, just sir. I just had lunch. Shout out really, Perry's, right? Without a doubt. Um, and it's a shame that we don't have more um, black businesses around town right. that's known where you can say, "Okay, I'm gonna go spend my money over here today," or "I'm gonna go exactly. spend my money over there today." Right. You know, I know there's a flower shop that my girl uh, Tiffany, her mom, owns over there on uh, right off of New York Drive and Lake. They've been there okay. for a long time. Um, there's a black uh, fish fish spot down on Orange Grove, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but other than that, man, I mean, it's really very just few not, far yeah. between. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Where where you can just go and say, okay, I'm gonna spend my money with y'all. Right. You know, and of course we got barber shops. Oh yeah, that's a, yeah, that's yeah, a that's, given. You know, that's a given. Like, yeah. So, but as far as really other shops where we can spend our money, there there, there is none. And well, it's a, yeah. oh, go ahead. Yeah, let me ask you this, man, because you know, you know, I, I'm all for cultural I dive cultural diversity, right. but I also understand. I also have understanding, you know right. what I mean, with different cultures and empowering the culture, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, but my one of the biggest things I see, biggest flaws I see in the black community as far as economic stimulation and things like that mm-hmm. is that, <clears throat> you know, a lot of our black women are in the nail shops that mm. are not owned by black women. Exactly. You know what I mean? And that's, to me, that is a root problem, you know right. what I mean, to a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed, you know right. what I mean? What, what do you have to say about that? Well, why is it that we won't own a shop like that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. What's the problem with us? I don't know if it's a if it's a thing that that they got a lock on that and they won't let us in. It's you something. Know what I'm saying? It's something because it's, I, I can I can really go any time of the day and just walk by there and I can guarantee you. It's gonna be some black women in there getting something done. Nails, hair, yeah. whatever it is. And no disrespect but, to the Asian population. Right. But we but, not we don't own that though. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and and for whatever reason, we won't own a shop. Man, I don't <laughs> You know what I mean? It, it's like why we why we won't why we why somebody won't say, you know what, I'm gonna start a beauty salon shop. I mean a, a hair product shop or, right. or whatever. Well you know, Eric, I've been in um, Pasadena since the sixties. Okay. You know? Since sixty two, but I remember in the late seventies, early eighties, uh-huh. there was a lot of black owned nail shops. Really? But the main complaints that most African Americans said their prices were too high. Or they their job wasn't thorough enough, the nail would fall off the same day, the next day. Uh-huh. So I think the Asians found a way where I can lower my prices and give you a much better quality job. And Man. I think that's what yeah, right. but you know they 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 really took the whole Once thing. I mean, right. the salon and the supply. Right. You know what I mean? Not just hair and nails, but but all of it. But see, you know what? That's that's. I mean, as far as when you say, you know, uh, uh, people say, "Well, that's too high," you know, or "This is too high." That I mean, that that trips me out sometimes because we'll go out and we'll go to the to a 
quote unquote white person shop or whatever, mm-hmm. they'll say, okay, that belt is 150. Okay, no problem. And right. shell out that 150. Exactly. But yet, you go over to Wayne's shop right, right here right. on Lincoln, and Wayne say, hey man, the shirt is 15. Oh, come on, Wayne, man. Right. Man, can't you give me that for 10? Can't exactly. you give me that for 9? You know, you know I saying? got you. Yeah, you come know. on, man, take yeah. care of me. So, <laughs> we'll, with no problem, give our money to anybody else. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But the minute we say, uh, uh, the price is something that we want to haggle and try right, to bring the price yeah. down. I mean, I deal with that, you know, from time to time with shirts. Right. Uh, your price is this and that. Well, man, look, that's what it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, yeah. yo, we got the shirts you just you did for us on it, and we we it was a great deal. You know what I mean? That's, like, yo, I mean, that was that was really like, right. like, you sure it's not more? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I try to take care of folks. You know what I'm right. saying? I want folks to like the work that I do. And I want them to come back. So I try to give folks, you know, the best deals that I can. And I noticed something that you do, Eric, that a lot of T-shirt makers don't do. You're very keen on detail. You know, yeah, like it got to be right. Small, and that's something I appreciate. You it got to be right. It's not so much about the expense; it's the quality. Right. And, you know, the, pre- the precise. Exactly. If it's not, if it's not right, right. they're gonna be like, "Oh man, he dub over there selling that whoop de whoop." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he never selling that garbage. Man, and that's what you don't want to hear. Because look, all it takes. look, look, man. I didn't want to order. I didn't want to go on uh, Cafe Press. Or, or something like that, and get a Hanes T-shirt or Food right. of the Loom or a Triple A. Right. Uh, you know, when I hollered at you, I was like, "Look, man, we need the Pro Club." You're like, "I got the Pro Five for you, it's even heavy, better." Tight neck. You know how the neck gotta be. Exactly. The neck got the neck can't hang. You know what I mean? Tight. Can't be drunk. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you what you want, man. You no know? doubt. And that's what. I, oh, okay, I was gonna say I got a little bee problem over there. I don't know oh. the head over there with the bees. But yeah, you're um, all right. But um. So, so just back on the the economic thing, right? Uh, how, what what are some things you think we can do better as a people? You know what I mean? Man, you know we so divided as a people, man. It's it's really hard, man. And I mean, even even for me to say, okay, well we got to start spending with each other. Okay, well where are we gonna spend that? Right. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. Because because we don't have that. You know. Then you say, okay, well we need to come together, man. It's so hard for us to come together. Dina, as small as it is, man, we have a gang problem that's that's like really out of control. Yeah, you know what I mean. Absolutely. The the the, the gang problem, and and like I told my partner Rob a long time ago, what gang violence is really based on is retaliation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's that's all it really is is, right. is is retaliation because you have this dude that killed this dude's uncle. So now he mad. So now he go and kill this other dude's cousin. And it's a never so ending. Cycle. And now it's a never ending cycle because you can have a crip from Altadena get along with a blood from from Inglewood, right? Because I'm other never... than the red and the blue, there's no real violence between them, right? But once you have that violence, once you okay, add that factor, yeah, in there, once you yeah. add that factor, of, okay, well this person did this to, to one of my people, then it's that violence that's in between them. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, exactly. and that's where that's that's what really gang violence is about, man. And and because the town is so small, you know what I'm saying? You As got it crips. is. Yeah, you right. got Crips that's related to Bloods, Bloods that's related to Crips, but you know, folks can't get along. Right. Because, right. Uh, well, yeah, yo, your homeboy killed my homeboy. Okay, well, your homeboy killed my homeboy. You know man. what I'm saying? And and so, you know, it's, it's, it's tough in Dana, man. Yeah, it is, man. And, and it's sad because <clears throat> you see some of these cats that are that are so committed, you know right. what I'm saying, that that you, you, you see that, you know, they're going to have to live that out. You know what I mean? It's just, you oh, know, there's nothing you, you can really tell them. You know what right. I mean? And uh, when you see that, it's just, it's sad, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know. <clears throat> but, you know, I know that, so you would you say that, you know, gang violence uh, or the result of gang violence has been one of the, you know, reasons why we we black people have kind of fell short out here? You know, man, it's it's not just the gang violence. I mean... It's jobs, it's schools, it's uh, you know, it's it's all that, it's yeah. all that together. Really, but like with jobs, you know what I'm saying? I think jobs may be at the at the heart of everything. Yeah. Because if folks ain't working, you know what I'm saying? Making money, kids, especially yeah. So young dudes, if they ain't working, they then gotta it's like, be okay. Then what else am I gonna get into? Right. You know what I mean? Right. And and before back in the back in the 80s and the 90s, when I was coming up, you know, it was the dope game. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The, the the dope game in Dana was something incredible. Man. You know what I mean? I, man, I'm not going to lie, man. You used to see the big thing used to be Suzuki trucks. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Then you had the Dooleys. Right. The Dooleys. Man, dudes, you Nigga, see the double, with both. The, the dual man, gas tank, hey, the all that. Gas, man, the, Suzuki, the little Suzuki Jeeps, all that, man. Dudes was around here really getting some money, man, with that with, and that dope game back in the 80s. But man. along with that, you know, it was a lot of a lot of folks got killed with that, right. too. Right. So, know, I mean, you man. was here when it hit, right? Without a doubt. Man, I was... I mean, I were was, you able to tell that it hit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you could see you could see the influx of money. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, you right. Could well, see, see people, you know, I was a 90s baby, so you got to okay. excuse me. Well, so, you yeah, know, no, no, man, <laughs> I already man. came. It was there. You yeah, know what I mean? No, you could see, <clears> you know... When dudes is coming to school with Gucci outfits and, and Louis Vuitton this and right. Louis Vuitton that. Knowing added. moms ain't providing yeah, all that. You know you what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you, you know, you're not getting there. And, you know, it's custom-made stuff. Dudes right. coming fitted all the way up. And you like, that's the dope guy. Man. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and that's what it was. The police wasn't really on it yet. So dudes was really getting that money. Right. You know, but then once everybody got hip and things started to change, you know, but... Yeah, the dope. And so I'm real. sure you seen cats that you know had their little runs, and then without a doubt, you know? I'm not gonna say no names, but <laughs> right. yeah, I, I I know dudes that that have had their runs, and dudes that that now, <laughs> if you if you seen them now, you know what I'm saying, you would be like that dude used to sell dope. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like not yeah. not this dude. Man, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm talking about I'm talking about dudes in 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 prominent positions hmm. today. Oh right, you know what I'm saying in in prominent positions, and you'd be like. Him? Like, yeah, yeah. No doubt. made it out. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> not everybody makes it out. Right, you know what exactly. I'm saying? But, exactly. But, but, but a few cats do, you know. So, you know, all in all, what would you say, you know, are, are just, you know, some of your biggest concerns, you know what I'm saying, in, in the Dina community? Because, you know, Dina is the community. It ain't Man, just, you know. You, you know what it is? It's that um, a lot of people moved out when... Um, when 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 the housing market crashed, yeah. and a lot of people, you know, when first when it was going up, and everybody was selling out, you know what I'm saying? They was offering all kinds of money, and people was like, okay, yeah, we'll take that, and everybody moved out to the IE, right? You know or the saying? AV, yeah, yeah, right. either a- a- IE or the AV, where everybody moved. Now you can't get back into dinner, right? You know what I'm saying? Real talk. You right. you can't you can't get back. I remember some years ago I read in the paper. And they were saying that that Pasadena, Altadena was like the blackest city around in for like miles. I like outside of L.A. Out of right, LA, right, right, right. We had the highest population. Like Inglewood, like yeah, that. Exactly. <clears throat> we, we had like the highest population <clears throat> of blacks <throat> right right out here. Wow. But now, man, back in the day, I mean, I don't know. You said you've been out here since 60, 62, man. Back in the day when the dope game, man, you couldn't walk down, just walk down Summit. Right. You couldn't just walk down Raymond. I know you this. Couldn't, you couldn't just I be know this. out and, you know, walking down right. and, by, and by the manor. Right. And nowadays you see white people and their dogs and babies, right. 7, 8 o'clock right. at night walking right. down Summit, walking right. down Raymond. You're like, man, what is this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's crazy. And with no that's fear. A, that, that's real talk. They though. at Washington Park having man, parties. Man, real talk. Like, man, for real? What is, what is this? Yeah. But, that's, but you know what I'm saying? That's how it is today. That's how much Dana has changed. Man, you know real what I'm talk, saying? real the, talk. The influx of, of, of Caucasians and mm-hmm. Asians, you know what I'm saying, have turned the prices up. And there was once upon a time where Altadena on this side, this was predominantly black, See? you know. There was hardly any Hispanics or whites, you know, the whites that moved out and the blacks that came in. in. Yeah. But when that market crashed, that changed a whole lot exactly. of things. That leveled the, the exactly. field. Man, and folks, folks sold out and got out and... Now, you know, a lot of these people, were, a lot of these homeowners, excuse me, <clears throat> were people that, you know, they bought way back. You know right. what I mean? When it was, I mean, it, it was always expensive, you know what I mean? But, but I, still. I mean, it was expensive for the time. Right. My parents, it's a house that we still, that we still own up on Alicia. My parents paid in, in, in 70, it's like 70, let's see, my sister was born. Not 73. In 73, my parents paid, I want to say $20,000 for their house up on Alicia. That what? house now today is worth like six hundred thousand. I got something better than that. My mom and grandparents they bought a duplex in Pasadena in nineteen seventy four for thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, thirteen thousand dollars. Thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Wow. And I remember their mortgage payments was a hundred and thirteen dollars a See? month. <laughs> yeah. That's how it used to be, and that's why you know it was so many blacks out here. Yeah. You know, but it, 
Back then, they had good jobs or, you know, they was at least decent jobs, right, you right. know. I remember my pops used to get up and drive out to Xerox. He worked for the Xerox Corporation, you know, and he used to get up and he had a little Volkswagen bug and pops beat it out to Xerox. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where were they located? Uh, Xerox was out in, uh, out in El Segundo. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. a cool so, little yeah, commute. To, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. He used to make it out to El Segundo. That's before they had a 105. They didn't know nothing about a 105. Wow, yeah, so wow. he had to either get, take the 110 down the century and or go all the way 5. across or come down to 405 wow. and go. But yeah, they, they, didn't have no four, they didn't have no 105. You know that 405 yeah. always been a mess. Been a mess. Oh, <laughs> so, you know, so you take that, take that century across. Right. You know? But All right, yeah. no doubt. Uh, real quick, we're going to take a quick break, okay. you know what I'm saying? But when we come back, you know, I want to talk more about, you know, you know, people that you looked up to, you okay. know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, more more inspirational based things. Okay. And then what you ultimately want to accomplish through your, you know, artistic endeavors, you know okay. what I'm saying? Sure. And uh, Wilson Block 100 Radio, I got 100. your boy Eric Williams on the block, and we'll be right back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 